Hello, and welcome to Pray 25. This Advent, we're so excited to prayerfully journey together with Mary. Advent is a beautiful season in which we prepare to invite Jesus into our hearts and homes at Christmas. And who better to lead us through this season than the woman who was there at the start of it all? Mary has a unique role in salvation history foreshadowed in the Old Testament and brought to fulfillment in the New. Her vocation to bring Christ to the world is a vocation that we all share in and one we seek to grow in during the Advent season. During the first three weeks of Advent, we'll explore three themes of Advent, hope, faith, and joy. We'll lean on Scripture to help us understand and grow in these virtues and on Mary as we ask for her help and opening our hearts to Jesus. Then, for the final seven days of Advent, Mary will lead us, as she always does, to her Son. We'll reflect on who Christ is through His titles in the traditional O Antiphon prayers as we bid Him to come into our lives and our world. This week, we begin with the theme of hope. The Catechism of the Catholic Church defines hope as the theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness, placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. Mary's yes to bring Christ to the world stemmed from her hope in the promises of God that fill the Old Testament, promises telling the Jewish people a Savior would come. Mary's knowledge of God's Word and memory of God's works gave her the courage to place her trust in Him above all else. Let's hold Mary's example of hope in our mind as we meditate on this virtue, looking to Scripture to show us the way. Begin by finding a comfortable position and taking a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Again, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Paul describes the virtue of hope in his letter to the Romans. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing as compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. What stood out to you from this passage? Hold it in your mind.
I'll now read the passage once more. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing as compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. Let's take a moment now to invite the Holy Spirit to intercede for us and to guide our prayer as we reflect. St. John Paul II said, From Mary we learn to surrender to God's will in all things. From Mary we learn to trust even when all hope seems gone. From Mary, we learn to love Christ, her Son, and the Son of God. Learn from her to always be faithful, to trust that God's word to you will be fulfilled, and that nothing is impossible with God. What in your life are you waiting for? How have the sufferings of this present time affected your hope? Where in your life do you struggle to surrender to God, to trust Him?
How can you look to Mary as an example to trust in God in all things? To invite Him into the midst of your waiting. St. Paul encourages us to await Jesus' coming and heaven with eager expectation and to hold on to hope even when it is hard to do so. So, for the rest of this time, we will focus in on just one thing, the hope of heaven. Imagine heaven with your loved ones, with the saints, with Mary, resting in the glory of God, being fully at peace. Let everything else fade away. Let your heart fill with hope. Whenever a fear or doubt comes to mind, ask the Holy Spirit to gently lead you back. As our time comes to an end, take a moment to thank God for this time in prayer. We'll close our prayer now and each day this week with the simple invocation, Mary, Mother of Hope, pray for us. Let's pray together. Mary, Mother of Hope, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tomorrow, we'll consider how Mary exemplifies the virtue of hope as we meditate on the Annunciation. Peace be with you. Thanks for praying with us tonight. We hope you enjoyed this session, and we look forward to praying with you again soon. If you found peace in this session, please like, subscribe, and share to help spread the word. 
Secondly, download the Hallow app to get over a thousand guided prayers and meditations. Now with a 30-day extended free trial with the link in the description. May peace be with you.